I know that was a long intro. I don't know what the Holy Spirit was doing, but he was already messing me up tonight. Listen, I think the title of my message is called Overflow. And really understanding kind of what that, what that means is unshakable joy. How do we get to a place of overflow? You know, when I think of the word joy, I instantly begin to smile on the inside of me. Like, I love joyful people. When I'm walking and I see someone smile at me, man, it makes my heart jump. But when I'm walking and I see someone that their face just doesn't look like joy, it's kind of like a buzzkill, and I just kind of, whoa, that person. You know, all right, Lord, no, no, I can't do it. You know, joy, joy attracts me to people. When I, when I feel people are down, you could be down, but when your whole human persona, the energy, you know, some people say, you've got good energy. <laughs> um, thank you. That's called joy. If you come to my church, well, you can call it whatever you want. It is good energy. That's why people love Jesus, because he had good energy. He always had joy. The world wants to take that, you know, and turn that energy into like universal principles. And the church is so quiet, we don't go redeem it. When I hear people say, it's like, yeah, the universe talked to me. That's Jesus, bro. That's Jesus. He created the universe, so you're super close. Super close. You know, it's like, you know, it's so amazing to me because Pastor Jurgen was preaching today and I was loving it. And, and he's always so joyful. That's why people are attracted to him. He just starts talking everywhere. I mean, there's been more baristas saved at Awakened Church than any other church in America. At one point, I thought we were only baristas here. Like everyone I meet, like, how'd you come here? I met Pastor Jurgen. I mean, how much coffee does he drink? I mean, he must just wake up and just go to different coffee shops. No wonder he's just skipping. And then he goes out there and surfs and crushes everybody out in the surf, comes back, and he's still skipping. Just jacked on flat whites. 6 a.m. till about 10. <laughs> Crashes, wakes up. His hair's just like, he doesn't even care. He's shooting a video, his hair's straight up. And he goes, yes! If you're watching right now and you're the barista, God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love it. But it's amazing. I realized years ago, and we preach on a joy and happiness are two different things. Happiness is what happens around you based on circumstances. But what I realized, joy is what happens deep inside of your spirit and your soul. So joy is a different thing. It gets deep. Happiness is the happening things to you. And the world, a lot of things happening. So there's just four quick people I want to just touch on real quick because I was in Washington, D.C. when I was in seventh grade, total punk. I got in trouble. Many of you heard the story. I just helped some people figure some stuff out. I got taken out, you know, so I actually didn't fulfill my mission of climbing out on a hotel roof and sneaking to the girl's side and opening their window because I got sick the next night. But then all my friends did because I told them, here, use the screwdriver I brought today. And we were there on that seventh, eighth grade trip. You know that trip where you go send your, your kids out to Washington, D.C., and you hope they're like walking around the monuments? Yeah, that's why my parents sent me. I caused massive issues on that trip. And I think I was the second night in, and I, the, my parents got a phone call and said, yep, we're sending Matthew home. Listen, my dad was a Marine. He had a belt that was fat, man. He had the belt. Like, I used to, like, when my mom says, when your dad gets home, I'm like, why don't you just take care of it? <laughs> so I would try to just entice my mom to spank me, and I'd be in it just crocodile tears. Like, oh my gosh, that's so powerful. She'd be whipping me after she should leave. I'd be giggling. My brother and I, we'd be knuckle. We'd, we'd shove Mad Magazine down our pants, and she'd be spanking Mad Magazine. I'm like, doesn't she know there's a magazine in my rear end? I mean, how does she not know that? I mean, it sounds like paper. That's not tissue. Like, if my daughter or my son did that right now, one what my dad. I mean, I would never do the paper trick with my dad. Because you know what that is? Now it's pants down, belt on the leg. Like, it is. Don't worry, counseling helped. It's fine. It's fine. 100,000 in counseling, dad. It's no big deal. I love you. He was just here. You guys know we're still friends. It was like, I, but his belt, fearsome. 
it would just hang. It was like a special wall mount. If it got too much dust, I knew one of these things. I'm going to do something dumb. I will be over that bed. No matter what I said, wouldn't talk out of it. He was already convinced. On the way, this is the worst phone call. Al, your son's not listening to me. I didn't even know what he needed to say. I just know, oh, man, I should run away now. He'll be home in an hour. But it was amazing that I stayed on this trip because they couldn't find a flight. It's really because my mom was praying. She goes, if they send you home, your dad's going to spank you till the sun. I don't even know what the verbiage was. But I meant it was a really long time. Like, I probably wouldn't even have cheeks anymore. So I was panicking, praying. It was like, man, on my knees praying in my hotel room. And I got busted, so I had to go stay with the chaperone of the trip. And it wasn't even for the company because the teachers didn't want to deal with me. So I'm up there staying with the CEO of this entire travel company. It's me and one other kid. But here's the thing. Praying parents help. It was mostly my mom praying for me because my dad wasn't praying. He's just praying I'd come home now. (laughs) So he could handle his business. Discipline. Long story short, another kid got busted with me and we both, I chose joy. I became friends. My thing is, I'm going to smooze this CEO of this company. I, so I was in there going, hey, can I do anything for you? I mean, we're just stuck up there. We had three more days of the trip. But I was determined while I'm stuck in a hotel room for three more days while the rest of my class toured D.C., I was going to win this guy over. I felt like Joseph. And I was going to win over the chief jailer. I'd been sold out by my brothers and sisters because I wasn't even out on the roof. I did nothing just because I gave a little something. Just because I wore a Technicolor coat. My brothers and sisters sold me out. I'm in the chief jailer. I was going to win over that jailer, and I did. Joy. He snuck me out. My other friend, he was having a pity party. Knew he was grounded. His life sucked. It was over. And guess what? He stayed in the hotel room and watched lots of movies and ate lots of pizza. Where this chaperone snuck me out. I got all my engravings for my dad. Win some brownie points off the Vietnam wall. Snuck me around to all the monuments where I got my picture in front of every one of them because I wanted my parents to get their money's worth. And man, I had a great time, so I stayed friends with that cat. And guess what? I got free trip the next year because I stayed friends with the CEO's son. And guess what? When my brother came two years later, he never paid for a trip. And then when I'm in grad school, guess what? I made $15,000 a year working as a travel guide for that guy's company, all because I chose joy. See, and no matter what circumstance... You have, we can choose to take some lemons and turn them into lemonade. You know, it's like it rained here. Some people are start talking about the rain. We need the rain. But it's amazing how many sourpuss faces came in my office going, I can't believe it's raining. I'm like, hey, well, those rain boots you probably haven't worn ever look really nice on you. When would you buy them, 2012? How'd you know that? Well, actually, the sticker's still on the bottom. (laughs) It's like... You got to wear the rain boots that you bought in 2012. They look brand new. That's fantastic. Look at that cheetah jacket. It's so fly. When did you buy that? 10 years ago? Looks brand new. San Diego, we can wear the same winter clothes year after year after year. And in six years from now, we finally look a little used. How do you look at life? I'm thinking to myself, I look at Jacob. He was the son of Isaac. Jacob, do I have a little Jacob? Look at Jacob. Look at this guy. Look at that. That was the first stoner. That was a bad joke. I haven't slept much lately, but I mean, that was a joke, people. I'm getting a lot of interesting faces. Choose joy. Choose joy. See? See what I'm doing there? We all have choices. So look at this. He's in the first book of Genesis, the son of Isaac. This is Jacob. And literally, he gets kicked out. He had no money, no wages. And literally, he went to serve his uncle Laban because he offered him a job. Couldn't find a job anywhere, went for Uncle Laban. Says, what do you want to work for? And he goes, ha, ha, I want to, ooh, Rebecca. The story goes, he he says, fine, you got to work for me for free. No wages for seven years and you can have her. After seven years, guess what? Laban, his good old uncle, tricked him, hooked up with his not-so-pleasant other daughter, Some refer to it as a wildebeest. (laughs) Read it. She was hairy. That's what the Bible says. And then guess what? He was tricked by somebody he thought loved him. Is this too much tonight? Yeah, I agree. But listen, he was tricked. 
And it was actually Rachel. But listen to this. And so for a few days, he's like, man, I came here to work for you for seven years for Rachel, your daughter. And he got tricked. Spent the night with the wrong one. And so his penalty was, you got to work another seven years. You know what? He chose joy. Through that Bible, it says literally, it says, he says, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. That's in Genesis 29, 18. And then guess what? He seen but a few days because of his love for her. In verse 29, 20, and it said, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. Joy will make you do things when other people are complaining. Same outer eight hour shift. Why do some people complain the whole eight hours and some are like, man, time flies. Yeah, right. yeah. Time flies. Same job, two different people, all perspective. What's our heart? I go on to think about other people that got in gnarly situations. I love when Richie was talking about tonight, there are models all throughout the Bible. You look at Joseph. And I was kind of joking around, but that's how I felt like Joseph, that his brother sold him out. He got sent down. He lost 13 years of his life. But because he didn't complain or gripe, God showed him favor in all that he did. And whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Yeah. Right. Right. Think about that. In the Bible, it goes on to say, uh, with Rachel, he, because of his faithfulness, because of Jacob's faithfulness, he said, he, God honored him with great wealth and a large family. You go on to Joseph, and the Bible says, and whatever Joseph did, the Lord made him prosper. Look at the theme. Your attitude is going to let you know what level you're going to go to in your life. Can God bless you no matter what your circumstance is? What comes out of your mouth? Sometimes we bless things. Sometimes we curse things. I look at Ruth, daughter-in-law of a Jewish widow, Naomi. And because she found favor and saw joy in the Lord when her husband died, when Naomi's husband died, she had a choice. She chose joy. I want to follow and serve you. I want to go with you back to Judea, I see what God has done in your life and I want to live under that because I know where I came from. I know the family I came from. I know the circumstance I came from. And even though I don't have a husband, I'm not going back to that. And because of that, both of them were blessed. God showed favor and blessed them. We're still talking about them today all because of her attitude and Ruth was blessed. And you look at it, what they had a son. It was the grandfather to David. You look at the lineage of what happened because she chose joy in unbearable circumstances. Take an inventory of your joy tonight. I just am bringing up a few of these people because I think it's so important that we don't get stuck. I look at Paul, a Pharisee who hated Christians and had a radical encounter and then went on to write most of the New Testament. I'm going to read a couple verses out of it as I land tonight because I want you to understand Paul, even from a prison cell, chose joy. Matter of fact, he wrote the book of Philippians, which is about the book of joy. Every verse in there. You can't help but feel better when reading Philippians. I'm going to read a couple verses. For I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. For me... For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Make my joy complete by being of same mind, maintaining the same love, untied in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Another verse, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to lies ahead, I press on towards the goal of the prize to the upward call of God and Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I love the song in junior high. And again, I say rejoice. Only, only I'm the only one that knows that song. Wow. Rejoice. I can't believe we need to bring back OG. Not one of you know that song? What's going on in kids' church? Yeah, I know. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart down in my heart. Thank you for that. Listen, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice all in the book of Philippians, all because Paul, 
even from a jail cell, even though he was shamed on and chased out of cities, and he hated Christian, had a conversion, he chose joy in every circumstance. Listen, I wanted to preach this tonight, just these few modeling people from the word of God, from the Bible, because the Bible shows all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament a blueprint to success. It's choosing joy no matter what we're going through, no matter what mandates come, no matter what it looks like, no matter if the sun comes up tomorrow, no matter if it's raining, snowing, tornado, whatever it is, and you look at the city that we live in, it is blessed. How do we turn on a thermostat that sets the temperature of our house? You have to wake up and remind yourself. Neurophysiology says this, if you take two neurons and you look under, if you Google, show me neuroplasticity, go to YouTube, say, show me neuroplasticity of anything I say. They'll show you two neurons that are firing. No matter what you say, when those firing neurons connect, they don't disconnect. So if you choose to wake up and feel sorry for yourself, the minute you speak about how miserable your day is, how miserable your boss is, how miserable your spouse is, how miserable your kids are, those neurons fire. Fire, fire, fire. The more you say it, the more they fire. And then one day they connect. And the minute they connect, Neurophysiology lays down a pathway. Same thing is true. If you talk about lack of money, you'll be neurophysiology creating neurons that fire and will make it easier to walk in lack. But you have to make a decision to wake up and rewire your mind. That's why the Bible talks about taking every thought captive to renew your mind. Starting in the morning, what's the first thing you do? That's why when I wake up, I have a worship song called Rattle, and my wife, it rattles her. <laughs> Can you change the song? No, because that's just my song. Starts off easier than authority. Which one do you want? Yeah. <laughs> but either way, that's the first thing I'm listening to when I wake up. We'll pray before bed, but I go through and I make declarations in my, my mind. I speak to myself in front of my mirror, what's ever on my mirror, I speak to myself because I wanna say some things to myself that when I go to bed, I know that I'm wiring things a little bit differently. You could say, oh, that's a little airy fairy. No, no, no. I, I don't want to make a mistake and just think I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to wire joy. I'm going to hardwire joy in my life because I don't know if my Wi-Fi is going to work tonight. But if I'm hardwired and I speak those things as though they are. That's why we do declarations. That's why we do confessions of faith. I wanna tell you that it's so important that we take responsibility for where we're at and we just speak life over ourselves. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. You know why church is important? You know what Pastor Jurgen did for me? Because I was a kid that forgot how to speak life over myself. I wasn't around my mom and dad and they did speak life over to me. My mom lied to me all the time and said I was amazing. She told me I was the best. She told me I was the best football player on the team. That was definitely a lie. I didn't know that till years later. My uncle would want, he'd straight up come to me. He goes, man, that's the prettiest looking uniform I've ever seen. Is there even a grass stain on it? Would you sit on the sideline the whole time? I'm like, I don't care what you say. My mom says I'm the best on the team and I believe her. You don't even have a kid. I'm glad I believe my mama, you know, it's like I said, that built me up some false confidence that became real in my mind. And you guys may laugh, but I'm telling you, my mom spoke life over me that built a confidence that I could do and be anything I wanted. I speak life over my kids. I tell them you could be and do anything you ever want. So I'm just gonna tell you, how you go to bed and speak to yourself and how you wake up matters. I want you to stand to your feet. I'm gonna pray over us tonight. In this season, we could be distracted by the chaos, the sugar, the traffic. I had to pray for my wife. She was complaining about the traffic. I must, babe, you got that ready for me? Okay, it's true. Is it a love letter? It's not a picture, darn. Listen, listen. Don't let anything take you out this Christmas season. 
There are so many amazing people. That's why I love men's prayer. I look around at champions. I love coming to church and seeing the festivities. The night of Christmas, you know what it is? For us that are believers, it's a party and we're gonna have fun. I mean, wait till you see what the events team has created out there. It's gonna be a winter wonderland. I shouldn't even say, but there's a wall and a hand's gonna come out with a Martinelli. Who thinks of this stuff? I have no idea, but it's amazing. Why would we do it? You know what? Not enough Christians know how to have fun. And we go to a church and we hear some songs and we leave, but it's not an experience to transform your life. If you need to know, when we say a house of transformation, we want you to come in and meet your best friends. We want you to meet people in DNA that you've never met before. But along the journey, you meet some incredible people. When I see men that are getting God stories of victory, they've broken addiction. They're gonna go back and save their marriage. You know what that feels like? To hear men get emotional in front of other men and say, I'm done with the lies of the devil. I'm gonna fight for my marriage. Man, I leave there like I'm gonna do this. When I see a man that's been kicked and beaten down and given up on business, push himself up like a gladiator off the floor and wipe the sweat off his brow and said, I'm gonna give it a go one more time. Thank you for believing in me and praying for me. And I see men get victory. Guess what? There's no better feeling. When we come to church and I say people up here and I knew where they were a year ago and now they're up on the worship team using the gift that God gave them. When I see twisted and I know where some of those kids have been, but they've been slaving for six weeks, 10 weeks, 20 weeks just to sit on carpet and do backflips and I see joy in their life again. Let's celebrate each other. Let's go out and find our joy. Be unshakable in our joy. Read the Word of God and get it on the inside of you. We have our new Awakened Bible coming out this Sunday. It's a one-year Bible that all of us get to come through. There's our core values in it. It's a letter from Pastor You're Gonna Land. Could you imagine our entire congregation? It's a daily reader. We just read the plan every single day together. There's only 2,500 Bibles. You know what I'm hoping? We get them all. All the other campuses are mad at Dr. Matt because he made an announcement a week early. I'm sorry, but get your order in. Get a way to get this Bible. Let's read it together. Let's go through the Word together. Let's go on a journey together. Listen, you won't recognize yourself if you get around people that are sharpen you, that you don't let the devil take you out. Be unoffendable. Don't let go of joy. Hold on to one another. Pray for one another. Come to men's and women's prayer. Whatever it takes, find a connect group. Whatever we throw, get involved. Just do it. How do I know that formula works? Because I'm a product of it. And some of the greatest preachers are yet to be found, but you're sitting up there in the pew and the devil's been trying to take you out. Some of the biggest kings and priests we've ever seen. Some of the greatest leaders in the marketplace are sitting right in here, yet you don't know yet because you haven't believed in yourself. Let the journey begin. This Christmas season, I always say, I know we're celebrating Jesus' birth, but this is how I visualize it. God sent his only begotten son this Christmas. And whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. You might believe for the first time, but I want you to see as we celebrate Christmas, it's actually your rebirth into a version of who God's called you to be. We might be celebrating Jesus' birth, but because he was born, you have a chance to be reborn for eternity. You have a chance to choose Jesus. Maybe you're away from God, or maybe you've never said, I want to need Jesus in my life with every head bowed and every eyes closed. Listen, if you're in this place tonight and you're like, I need Jesus. I need an unshakable joy. I either need to give my life back to Christ or I need to give my life to Jesus for the first time. I just want you to raise your hand and I'm gonna pray for you. If that's you tonight, just raise it up so I can pray for you. Thank you for your hands right here. Come on, thank you for being bold. Thank you for listening to the call. I see your hand up there, thank you. Come on, I love it. When hands start going up, I know the devil loses his grip. I see your hand, young lady. Once you put it up, you can put it down. Every time a hand goes up, there's another angel partying in heaven. Listen, Pastor Jurgen said this morning, after every day of creation, 
He said, hmm, that's good. Every day, create the earth, the stars, the heavens, separate. He said, hmm, that's good. Created all the creatures, and there's a lot of them. He said, hmm, that's good. Created the sun and the moon, hmm, he saw the sun set, hmm, that's good. But on the sixth day, he created man and woman in his image, and he leveled it up before he closed the night, and he says, that's very good. Listen, he created you and me in his image. You were created by God for God to do radical things. And the devil wants to take us out. You are worthy of radical things. Choose joy. For those that raise your hand, listen, you could all look up. Raising your hand doesn't get you into heaven. All it does is acknowledge. It actually, to me, it's like you reach up for a miracle to get breakthrough in your life. God sees your hand, but he knows your heart. As a whole church, I want us to say this prayer. Are you with me? Yeah. Come on. Let's say it together, all of us, and let's celebrate one another. And you know what? If you raise your hand, you should be, just let the world know. I gave my life to Jesus on a Wednesday night at a church service, and my life will never be the same. And you tell your friends, because I want them to watch you light up on the inside. But let's say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, all of us. Heavenly Father, tonight, I give you my heart. I choose you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I receive the free gift of salvation. And tonight, Lord, show me the rest of my life. I choose joy. Let the rest of my life be the best in my life. And everybody said. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.